Good morning. I'm Natasha and this is Always Be Crafting. It is Sunday morning, the 26th of April, and I spent yesterday filming my very first tutorial. And I'm really excited to be presenting that to you today, but I've been reviewing my footage and boy do I talk a lot. It's supposed to be an easy tutorial on how to do a zipper pouch and I'm listening to myself and I'm going into the history of scissors and stabilizers and a whole lot of information that is just superfluous. And it's like a two hour tutorial. So I'm going to be editing and editing and editing today to bring you the best tutorial I possibly can because I really do want this to be useful for you. But I'm on my way to work this morning you can hear my, um, what's it called? Turn signal. You can hear my turn signal, right? And I'm excited to continue editing and really give you the tutorial you deserve. Thank you all for being a part of my process, helping me grow as a YouTuber. And I'm just really excited. So hopefully after this, you'll be watching a tutorial. Bye. Hi there. I'm Natasha and this is Always Be Crafting. Now, if you've been around for a little while, and it can only be a little while, because I've only had this channel for about three weeks, but if you've been around for a little while, you'll know this is my very first time doing a tutorial. I'm a little nervous, not gonna lie, I'm a little nervous, but I'm also really excited. If this is your first time tuning in, welcome, thank you for joining us. It is very exciting to have new friends come and join us. I love the YouTube community. There are so many wonderful crafters and makers out in this world. So I'm glad you found us today and I hope you'll like what you see. So I put it out on Facebook. What do you guys want to see a tutorial for? Would you like to see a drawstring pouch or an easy zipper pouch? And most people responded that they would like to see an easy zipper pouch because zippers seem intimidating. I agree, zippers seem intimidating. But now that I've been doing zippers for a while, they are my favorite. I can't lie, I don't want you to be intimidated, I promise you, both pouches are easy. And so, without further ado, I guess it's time to turn you around and start looking at, our, at what we need to get started. Let's talk about zippers. Now these five zippers are what we're gonna work with today. This little pink one is a number three zipper. It's three millimeters across the teeth. This white one is a number five zipper. It is five millimeters across the teeth. Generally speaking, when making bags, we work with number five zippers because they give us more space, more tape alongside the teeth to work with. Just easier with our sewing machine. I think today we're gonna work with this gray zipper. I love how big the pull is, and I think we have some really cute fabric to go along with it. Maybe we'll embellish it later. Now we have some examples of something called zipper tape. Now you can also find this sold as zippers by the yard, which is where you buy zipper tape and then you cut your zippers to size. This zipper tape here was sold with these zipper pulls. I think it came with about 14 zipper pulls with about 10 feet of zipper tape. Now that was sold through Amazon, but you can buy zipper tape in lots of lengths. This zipper tape was bought at three yards from another source. I will link some in my show notes, and then you can find lots of zipper pulls to suit your fancy. Here we are with our fabric. I have chosen to use this bird fabric and this cheetah print fabric to go along with our zipper. Now the first thing we're gonna need to do with our fabric, after we open it up of course, is we're gonna have to take it to the ironing board. So here I am just talking <laughs> a lot with my hands as you can see, but you know what? That's enough of yesterday, Natasha. Let's take it to the ironing board and get that fabric ready to use. 
And I'm happy to report we are back from the ironing board and the fabric looks much better. Here I am showing you the tools I will be using. My friction marker, which is a heat erasing marker. My zipper, of course. I have a pair of fabric scissors and fabric scissors are wonderful for cutting fabric, but you don't want to cut too many other things with them. So I had to go get another pair of scissors to cut my zipper. What I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the metal ends from each end of the zipper. That is going to make it where the zipper pull could easily come off. So we need to create zipper tabs. That's going to prevent the zipper pull from falling off. Now here I am measuring the zipper tape. All you really need to know is your zipper tabs need to be a lot bigger <laughs> than your zipper. I'm measuring mine at three by two. And I'm making two, one for each end. All right, I'm slowing down the footage now so you can see how I fold the material wrong sides together and then fold the wrong sides in again to make like a little hot dog bun. Then I slip my zipper end right into that end like that. You could put a clip or a pin to hold it in place, but I'm just gonna take it over to the sewing machine in a minute. And again, I'm making one for each end of the zipper. And again, that is to prevent that zipper pull from pulling all the way off. Just viewing the last video I made, realizing that there was no way for you to see the needle going up and down and you couldn't really see the box that I was sewing. So here's another look a little up close of the box we just sewed around on both sides. And now we will go ahead and move the camera. We'll try a new camera angle before we start sewing again. But let's go really, truly cut the fabric. So at this point, I was walking you through all the different steps. First, cutting off that extra fabric. That fabric was really handy in sewing those zipper tabs onto the zipper because it really gave me a lot of control while I was at the machine. Unfortunately, that footage was lost and I am so sorry, but I promise that was very simple. Now you see that I just removed the selvage end off the bird fabric because I was just looking at this bird fabric. Oh, what size pouch am I gonna make? I'm moving it around, I'm moving it around, and then I realized, oh, why don't I just compare it to the zipper? There we go. I've compared it to the zipper. I've measured my zipper finally. It was 11 and a half inches. So I am measuring out my fabric one inch wider. So 12 and a half inches wide for my fabric cut. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm measuring that on the back side of the fabric. Or actually, it's, yeah, it is the back side of the fabric. 12 and a half, taking it up and down. And then I'm gonna connect those dots so I can cut a line 12 and a half inches, there we go. So I have a piece of extra fabric there folded up to the side. And now I'm going to use my bird fabric on top of my cheetah print fabric and cut my cheetah print fabric to match. And I realized this little piece of cheetah print from the side left over from the zipper tabs is gonna make a really cute little handle. So now I am telling you about the wonders of stabilization. Uh, long story short, I am going to put SF 101. That's this product right here. It is a glue backed, heat activated, so it's iron on um, stabilizer. So SF 101, it's by the company Pellon. You can find lots of different stabilizers out there in the world. This is the one that I use. And I'm telling you, I'm gonna take it to the ironing board, iron my fabric onto the stabilizer and be right back. And I'm back <laughs> through the magic of editing. I have stabilized both pieces of fabric and now I'm going to cut them in half. So now the final measurements are going to be nine by 12 and a half. Now I got that measurement of nine inches because each piece of fabric was 18 inches tall. I don't believe I mentioned this since, you know, the magic of editing. Um, those pieces of fabric that I started with were fat quarters and fat quarters are naturally cut at 18 inches tall. 
So 18 inches tall divided in half is nine inches tall. So my pieces are nine inches by 12 and a half inches. Again, that 12 and a half inches was determined because my zipper tape was 11 and a half inches. Now that I have everything cut, I'm looking at my two exteriors and my two interiors, my birds for my outside, my cheetah for my inside, and I'm debating how to finish the bottom. I want to do a boxed bottom, which means I'm going to take a little square of fabric and remove that from each of the bottom corners. And I'm trying to decide how, how tall I want my bag to be. So that's what I'm kind of thinking through right now. I'm going to, you know, tell you what I chose. I chose to take a one and a quarter inch square out of each bottom corner. So from the exterior fabrics and the interior fabrics, I took a one and one quarter inch square out of each one. So I drew that with the ruler and then I cut that with my scissors. What I'm doing is I'm preparing my fabric so when I go to my sewing machine, I can do everything all at one time. So everything is getting prepped, so everything will get sewn in one go. And here they are. I've got two pieces of exterior, two pieces of lining or interior. My little cheetah print strap is getting folded up. I'm gonna sew that together and then attach it and my zipper. Everything is ready to go to the sewing machine. I'm so excited. Oh, you know what? I do need to do one more thing. I need to find a halfway point, a middle point, if you will, on my bag so I know where to put my label. All right, let's take it to the machine. Let's start with sewing that strap. Now what I'm doing is I'm simply sewing all four edges of the strap about one eighth of an inch from the edge all the way around starting on the long open side and then making a long rectangular box cutting off all my loose threads and now moving on to my zipper now what i like to do is i like to center my zipper and I start it by going upside down. So my zipper is currently open and upside down, face down on my bird fabric and my bird fabric is facing up. This is also known as right sides together. If you like, you can always use pins or clips and measuring is always a good idea, but I only needed about half an inch on each side. So I could eyeball that because I've been doing this a very long time. You need to do what you're comfortable with. Now I am taking my lining fabric, that cheetah print, which goes on the inside. Again, right sides together. And you saw that I was moving my needle because the foot of my sewing machine is riding alongside the coils of the zipper, the zipper can kind of be bothersome, kind of get in the way. So I move my needle either to the left or to the right, wherever it's going to be to be easy to use. Trimming away all my loose threads and now turning everything right side out. You can see how that zipper now pops up and my wrong sides are now facing each other. I've lined everything up, moving my needle again. Now, here's one place I made a mistake, and I know I made a mistake because when the bag is done, <sighs> I saw the mistake. What I've done is I did not do a back stitch at the beginning and end at this point. I really should have done a back stitch. Beginning and end right at the beginning and end of my zipper. Anyways, we're moving on to the other side and my right sides together. So I'm matching up my other bird fabric and it's facing my other bird fabric. So my birds are facing each other right now. So you're seeing the inside fabric. You're seeing my cheetah print from side number one. 
I'm using my stiletto to help line up my zipper. I don't know if you've noticed, but as I get close to the actual zipper pull and uh, with my needle, I am just putting my needle down into my fabric and lifting my presser foot up and I'm pulling the zipper pull out of my way. All right, now I've added my cheetah print to the other side. So it looks like a great big sandwich now. Moved my zipper pull out of the way so there's no lumps and bumps. Here, like that, there you go. And I'm finishing off that side. Again, I wish I had done my forward stitch and back stitch. All right, opening up side number two, smoothing it out so I can top stitch that final side where again, I forget to do my forward and back stitch. I just do forward. Oh, well, that's okay. It still comes out to be a beautiful bag. I just have a one little regret at the end. <laughs> but look how cute this is. Isn't that cute? All right, now that we've trimmed away all the extra threads, it's time to bring back that strap. And I'm deciding where I want it to be at the end of the day and pinning it to the fabric. Now I want my pins to be far away from where my needles are gonna be. And I also only pinned it to the bird fabric because now we are going to sew the bag together, which means the birds are facing each other and the cheetahs facing each other. Here I've placed a double pin at each place that I want to start and stop the sewing process. So my cheetah was lined up double pinned because that's where I'm going to start. And here I am lining up my seam. So there's my zipper, my end where my zipper is. And I'm really smoothing it out because I want to make sure I don't sew over my zipper tape. Remember I said it was a half inch inside on each side. That is to accommodate for me sewing the bag closed right now. I don't want to sew that zipper tape into the edges of my bag. It's just gonna have a cleaner finish when we're done. So I am now pinning, again, keeping my pins nice and far away, smoothing everything out. That stabilizing fabric really helped. I'm marking myself some ideas of how I'm gonna go around. It's not exact. I could have used a ruler if I wanted it to be exact, but I'm really just pointing out that I'm gonna be starting at the double pins, going around the bag, hopping over those corners, and then ending at the second pair of double pins. Checking that I have enough stabilization to hold everything together. Moving everything where I need it to go, I start with a bit of an L stitch, come in. Now, since I'm starting on my lining, my lining I actually have at about a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance, maybe a little bit bigger. It's a little bit bigger of a seam allowance anyways. Uh, there I did my forward and back stitch at my boxes. Each box you're gonna go forward and back, hop over, pick up on the other side. Here I am coming up on my first zipper. Remember I'm not, I don't want my needle to go over the zipper so I'm gonna slow down. I wish my ring finger wasn't in the way for you to see, but there we go. Went up and over, I'm getting to my next box, forward and back, hop up and over to the next side, forward and back. This is the bird side of the fabric. In case you're playing along at home, forward and back for my next box, forward and back after we've hopped over. Okay, coming up on the next zipper. Nice and slow, slow it down just a little bit, making sure, keeping that stiletto helping me. So while I was about three eighths of an inch seam allowance on my cheetah fabric, um, fabric, excuse me, I'm actually closer to a quarter of an inch seam allowance on my bird fabric. Again, on my cheetah fabric, I was about three eighths of an inch seam allowance. And on my bird fabric, I was about quarter inch seam allowance. So just a slightly tighter lining. That's just gonna help the bag sit nicer when it's all put together. Now I'm cutting all my threads, getting everything and opening up those boxed corners. 
Now I am nesting my seams. I didn't get those on camera as well as I would have liked. I apologize for that. But um, what I did is I want to make sure that my seam on one side matches as close as I can to the seam on the other side. Let's see if I get that on camera. Let's see. Mm, kind of. Almost. See? Yep. Yeah, there we go. So I'm going to box that second corner trying to match my seams up so they are going in the same direction against the bottom of my bag. So that's the lining, that's the inside of my bag. And I want to make sure that that lining is folding over, if you will, in the same direction. Okay, moving up to my bird fabric, nesting my seams. It's interesting as um, getting to do commentary like this, watching my footage back and commenting on it in voiceover form, I do get to learn a lot about how I filmed this and what I would do ne better next time. So again, thank you all for joining me on my very first tutorial. I've learned a lot from filming this. I definitely see how I would have made some changes, but my goal is to have this posted. <laughs> so, you know, may not be the best tutorial, but it is my first one and I'm pretty proud of it. All right, I just literally turned around. You're seeing all the different sides of this table, this setup. This is the fabric I set aside for the other zipper bag. Um, I'm determined and it's gonna be fast. All right, are you ready? We're gonna turn it inside out. I'm gonna reach in through that hole that we left open. I'm going to, remember we left the zipper part way open. So let me find that, okay, there it is. So I can reach in and grab the exterior so I can pull that out. And just slowly, I'm going to just, slowly but surely, make sure, I think I wanna make sure that zipper is all the way open. Because again, remember this fabric, fabric, that was a weird way to say it. This fabric is extra thick, because again, that stabilizer. Here we go. And um, so it's thicker than it was before. There's no reason that it has to be rushed. We don't wanna rip any threads unnecessarily. <laughs> this is so pretty. Oh, I really like this bag. Oh, this is so stinking cute. Okay. <sighs> oh, I hope this works. All right, so now while this hole is still open, you can reach your hand inside and make sure you pop out those little boxed corners in each end. Make sure they make sense. Okay, look at that little handle we made. Pop up the zipper from that side too. Oh, I left, oh darn you, Natasha. I should have zip, I should have sewn further. Can you see that? You can see my thread. Oh darn, I should have gone further. I should have done a better, um, maybe if I had done a back stitch there. Gosh, what was I thinking? This is what happens. This is what happens when you start again and stop again and ooh, mistakes get made. But you know what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take a hand needle and I'm going to put a couple of um, knots with a hand, a hand needle and thread in that end and in that end because those are the only, ooh, my pin's still there. Those are the only two places that I'm concerned about the thread coming up, okay? Um, but that's it, okay. So now I'm going to remove my hand from the bag and this box bottom, and this box bottom. So you just pull them tight and because of the way we sewed it, the L just goes whoop, right back together. And look at that, it's like a perfect finish. Okay, now this was, ooh, is that thread coming up? Oh my gosh. Again, you gotta sew with your favorite threads because this is what happens when you sew with your not favorite thread. You just get sad. You just get sad. Okay, my regret so far, my thread because 
I was annoyed and when I'm annoyed, I wanted to go fast. I think if I had just set myself up with my very, with my very favorite, it's such a small thing having a different thread, but um, I think I would have been happier. How am I gonna solve this? So my solutions are I can stitch this by hand, I can glue this, or I can put this on the machine and just do a very small sit stitch right across the bottom, just like that. So I'm probably going to choose the machine stitch, even though I'm really annoyed with this thread, just because I want this bag done. But um, I don't know, I might hand stitch it since I'm gonna have to hand stitch the corners to make sure they stay. Let me pop the, let me push this in and see how it looks. Let me see how it looks. Cause remember I sewed the lining just a tiny bit tighter because I made the seam allowance just a tiny bit bigger. <gasps> oh my God, it's perfect. Look how perfect that is. Can you see that? I have to look on camera. I have to look. Is that perfect? It's perfect. I don't think I want to. Yeah, I'm gonna hand stitch that because look, look how cute that bag is. Oh, I thought this was gonna go up. I don't know why. Something about when we were sewing it, I guess I can't do geometry. <laughs> oh, it's too bad my two can heads were in the zipper. That's okay. They were gonna be in the zipper on that side too. That's just the way the fabric was cut. That's what, those are my options, but that's okay. I still love it. Oh, gosh, I love this bag. Do you love it? I hope I didn't make that harder for you. I hope I made that easy for you, even with all my craziness. <laughs> oh, it's such an easy bag. Okay, I'm gonna hand stitch this because I should have, I should have done a, a back stitch at the beginning and end. That is my fault. So do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> and um, back stitch when you're um, putting in your zipper and you're top stitching. The top stitch is just, just decorative, so it's not actually holding in the zipper. The zipper's still gonna stay, but um, it's gonna look a lot better if you don't have loose threads, like I have loose threads right now, and that's gonna drive me nuts. And this is a stinking cute bag. I mean, let me put it back where you can see it better. Come on, that's stinking cute. And I guess that's it. The bag is done. We're done. <laughs> Thanks for watching.